The boss music pumps for your heart. The battle is intense and everything is completely under control. Sleep is ridiculously powerful in Elden Ring and no one is talking about it. Hello, my fellow Tarnished! Today I bring you my investigations, my testing, and my discoveries when it comes to the notion of, hey, sleep's a really cool new status, and I want to make a build revolving around it because I feel like it's got a lot of potential, and yeah, it's got a lot of potential. I mean, as you're seeing, enemies that don't like sleep become absolute trivial jokes because you can just chain sleep them with one attack and then repeatedly critical hit them and yeah game is hard now you might also be thinking ah but what about enemies that are a bit more resistant to sleep well we'll get to them too and they really do prove no obstacle actually this also completely destroys people in pvp as well so first what is sleep well it's that thing you do every night yeah, 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 okay. It's a new status in Elden Ring, which, like all statuses, builds up as it gets applied to you, and when the bar is full, well, you fall asleep. There are three levels to sleep. There is level one, completely and utterly knocked out, you're unconscious for ages, and you're just waiting to be a critical hit. There is level two, where you don't go completely unconscious, you instead have a kind of oh, 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 stagger, which essentially translates as a two second stun, during which you can just get beat on. And then finally, the third level is completely immune. This only applies to a very select group of enemies that would thematically, yeah, be immune to sleep, but it really doesn't affect this build at all, because it still does ridiculous amounts of damage, even without sleep being a factor. So, step one, we need our source of sleep. We don't want to be spam crafting sleep bombs and throwing them. We don't want to be constantly using sleep arrows and carefully aiming. That's not viable in, you know, actual toe-to-toe -to -toe combat. We don't want to be using the torch because that's too slow and ineffective. So it really just leaves one option, the one sleep actual blade in the game. And that is the Sword of Saint Trina. This can be acquired actually ridiculously easy, just slightly into Kaelid, which makes this sword a fantastic fantastic weapon to grab at the start of a new playthrough to use as your main weapon as you progress because it really is insanely effective. In any case, from one of the earliest graces in Kaelid, you just hop down into the ruins, run through them, find a statue, fit it a key, go down the steps, and uh, grab yourself, well, a brand new weapon. And the build-up on this is ridiculously quick. As you've seen and have been seeing, a lot of the time it's one use of the ashes and they're asleep. The ashes which fires out a cloud of sleep dust which is incredibly effective at build up and does one single massive sleep build up attack and coats the sword in sleep to then make the sleep build up even more. With the sword actually lit up, well it might as well be singing. Go to sleep. To get some like hard tests on this against a player it takes five hits to put them to sleep without the power-up, it takes three hits with the power-up, and it takes one hit of the ashes. And then on a play-up, they're stunned for two seconds, and they can't do anything. Oh, and you can just chain the ashes for as long as you have stamina and mana, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit tiny, tiny bit effective. There is a tiny window you can roll out of this and break the chain, but it's very difficult to nail, especially if you start free-aiming and you keep catching them with the cloud, and it's just obnoxious. But obviously, PvP is one thing, and we will get back to that, but we care about PvE here. The chief thing that sleep does then on most enemies is make them open to a critical attack. And not just any critical attack, it does more damage than other critical attacks, which makes sense because they're in their sleep, so it's a proper coup de grace. Yep, short, basic, soldier start of the game, but 4,000 damage is a lot of fun! Even on the super latest stuff in Farum, you're still up there with 3,000. It just feels good to walk up to each enemy, go nighty night, and then one shot them when they're none the wiser. Obviously, then, you want as part of this build to have a maximum crit attack damage setup, and that's easily achieved because you simply need 
One weapon and one talisman. And the weapon is the Misericorde. And yes, it does feel right to say it in that way. Found uh, behind a stone imp statue in uh, the Stormvale Castle. So again, gettable very early. The reason you want this is because it's got a crit rating of 140. This is the highest crit rating on any weapon in the game. And it makes for some meaty crits. The crit rating basically is the multiplier of damage when you're on it. So most weapons sit at 100, but this takes it up to 1.4, which is incredibly effective. Obviously, a lot of other things affect crit damage, the weapon's actual damage, your stat scaling, and yes, talisman. So obviously, we want the talisman that increases crit damage. This is found in Volcano Manor. You have to progress through it. Once you beat the uh, godskin boss that you will find there, you go from that grace, go on a fair amount of a long run, and eventually, 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 past, yes, another stone sword key statue and fog wall, you can get to it after a little bit of parkour, hanging from a corpse on a ledge. It is quite the convoluted one, but definitely worth it, as this is a massive boost to critical attacks, which is key here. I've also added in both the Cerulean and the Red Assassin's Dagger, which means every critical attack, you get back massive amounts of health and FP. And as you're constantly critting every enemy you come across nearly from the sleep, this is an endless supply of health and mana, which helps you massively save on your flasks. And mid-boss fight, because yes, a lot of bosses are affected by sleep, either full sleep or the two-second stun that lets you keep beating on them. And yes, you can start building the next sleep as soon as they start falling asleep from the first sleep, which means in a lot of cases you can have the next sleep built up while they're still waking up from the first mini sleep stun, and you just keep chaining it forever, and it's just hilarious. But one of the best examples is what you're seeing, the Godskin Duo. They are very sleepable, and one of them could just stay asleep for a couple of minutes, it feels like, while you fight the other one. It also, again, constantly opens up to massive damage crit attacks from what I'm doing with the dagger. The Ashes of War I've got on the dagger, by the way, Royal Knight's Determination, is a near 80% damage boost, and yes, that applies to the critical attack. If you want to know how to get that and how ridiculous it is, I have made an entire video dedicated to it, and I will link that down below. As yes, that 80% damage boost applies to everything, including spells, and on spells it lasts for 8 seconds, so check that out. But yeah, as you're seeing, it just gives you this amazing element of control during a fight which just feels wonderful to have, especially in something chaotic as a gank boss fight. It's really genuinely so much fun. And obviously, I am dual wielding them here in a lot of cases, and obviously you only get one of them per game. So if you do go to New Game Plus and grab a second one, or like I did, get a friend to drop you theirs if they don't need them, then this turns up to a 11 as you can start power stancing, hitting with both weapons at once, which really builds up the sleep. There is very few enemies that I have found that don't get slept by just two L1 attacks, and that is ridiculous. It really, really is. Sleep is so good, I cannot stress that enough. And then in PvP, it becomes an incredible trading weapon because you just need to get two attacks off before they get stunned, and then you get two free more attacks. And given the amount of damage they do, that's enough to kill most players, even at high levels of vigor. Because they're just normal straight swords, they are incredibly speedy compared to damn near everything you will see get used in a PvP meta build setting, which makes these a really nice little surprise mix up to bust out in your invading. It really, really is a lot of fun. Though, make no mistake. It does work just fine with just the one saw. That's why I only used uh, the normal single attack moveset during the boss, just to really prove the point. In fact, really, the only negative of this build, apart from the tiny minority of sleep immune enemies, is that weirdly, when you buff the weapon, and you can buff both if you are dual wielding, if, as long as you do left hand, then right hand, but weirdly, with them lit up, if you take damage, it gets rid of the weapon buff which doesn't happen with other weapon buffs, so I am left wondering if this is a bug, and if it gets fixed, this will be even more ridiculous, like seriously, or if it's just a self-balancing mechanism for sleep particularly, that it is just programmed to go off when you take damage, but either way, it kind of sucks, and this does feel bad, and it's kind of annoying. Granted, the natural build-up on the weapon is so good, you don't need to be buffed up, but it would be nice to be able to take a hit and keep your buff, like I don't know why they're randomly discriminated against here, 
But in any case, yeah, that is essentially it. Get the sleep weapon, get a high critical damage setup to go along with it, and find yourself just destroying both every random enemy you come across, people in PvP, and bosses too, as they like to get a good night's sleep as well. Obviously, both the dagger and the sword scale off decks, so this naturally finds itself suited to a high dex build, but I like to throw this weapon on at my Int Sorcerer build, because he can still use it, because the requirements are quite low, just as a mix-up to pull out and then bust out some sleep, which is a really nice surprise tool in your arsenal. Also helps a lot in normal, you know, single player, when you're having a particularly difficult enemy and you really just want to critical hit it to death. I hope you have found this useful. I hope you have found it, well, sparking the old imagination. I hope you find yourself now riding out to grab this weapon and start playing with sleep too because it really is Ah, okay, like, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more, uh, hit the bell uh, for more Elden Ring tips, tricks, builds, guides, funny bits, all of that good stuff. And consider supporting the future of this channel on Patreon down below. Until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye <laughs>